Good morning. I want to start today by saying Namaste to you. Namaste is a greeting used in mainly Southeast Asia region of the world. And before the lockdown, when we were told not to shake hands with people, we wondered if it might be an appropriate greeting to go forward with. I didn't think this week should pass without reference to the death of George Floyd over a week ago and then the natural unrest and anger that's followed. And with that in mind, Namaste might be an even more appropriate greeting than we realise. You see, it means I see the light in you. I see you. It's about seeing the wonder and the worth in another human being. Jesus lived a life of, I see you. He saw the worth of people who had been forgotten about or excluded. I see you. We should always be looking for the light in people. We should always be practicing Namaste, I see you. And perhaps this would be a, an appropriate greeting to come out of lockdown with. But for today, may you recognize that we follow a God who is relentless in his love for you, even when we fail him, and that his love is not just for us, but for all mankind. May we seek his help to live a life of, I see you, of seeing the light in all people. And I've asked Major Angela Strickland, an American officer serving in London in our international headquarters, to share a prayer with us just now. Father God, creator of heaven and earth, you formed us in your likeness. You know us, you see us. Lord, we know there are many verses in scripture that tell us how much you love and value us. Each and every one of us has worth. So Lord, the recent tragic deaths of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor and Ahmaud Arbery have many hurting and angry people asking who valued their lives. Across America and around the world, there is outrage and an outcry from people of color and their supporters asking why their lives are valued less than others. Father, we come before you today seeking wisdom and guidance in all that is taking place. The prophet Isaiah tells us that we should seek justice and correct oppression. Show us how to do this. Give us a boldness to speak out against racism, intolerance, and inequality. We lift in prayer the families of George, Brianna, and Ahmad, and for people across the nation and around the world that feel a deep hurt with every senseless death. We pray also for those that live in fear that this could happen to them or their loved ones. We know you see them. We pray for law reform and for those in authority to receive proper training in how to value every life, regardless of the color of their skin. We pray for unity, bringing one voice that cries out for equality, saying that we all have great value in the eyes of God. May this build peace, give hope, and may it also transform the hearts and minds of those still in opposition. Father, we pray for safety and protection of Salvation Army facilities across the U.S., as some have been affected by looting and damage. We also pray for the officers and staff and those that are serving during the protests. Please keep them safe. Father, thank you for those already seeking your wisdom in forging a new path, building bridges and working towards peace. Thank you for those in law enforcement and politics that acknowledge that what has been taking place is wrong and that there must be change. Finally, Lord, David tells us that righteousness and justice are the foundations of your throne. We seek your holy justice in this war on equality. May each of your children find hope in your word, knowing that you see us and that we are all equal in your eyes. May your Holy Spirit fall upon the earth and bring peace and justice. We pray in your name. Amen. Thank you, Angela. I've chosen this week to put together a reflection on Psalm 23. Now, Psalm 23 is perhaps the most well-loved and well-known Psalms in the Bible. It's very familiar to some of us, so much so that it might just rattle off the tongue 
without us even thinking much about the words that we're reading or saying. But there may be some of you who are watching who, who don't know this gem. And so I've asked some members of Bromley Salvation Army to take a phrase from the psalm and explain what it means and then to also offer a prayer. The psalm was written by David and before David was king, he was a shepherd. He understood all that was required of him as a shepherd. Talk about I see you. He knew everything about his flock of sheep. A good shepherd does know everything about them and he cared for each one the same and he looked out for all of his flock. A good shepherd knew his sheep and they knew him too. David went through many experiences in life. He'd known good times. He'd known tempting times as well. He'd known scary times when he was fearing for his life. And David contemplates all of this and makes a natural comparison with the Lord, his shepherd. Here's the reading. Some years ago, a famous actor was giving an after-dinner speech at a black tie event. He asked his audience if there was a famous poem that they wanted him to recite to them. There was silence. And then an old vicar put his hand up and said, Psalm 23, please. The actor was a bit nonplussed, but agreed, on one condition, that the clergyman should also recite the psalm after he'd finished. The clergyman reluctantly agreed and the actor recited Psalm 23 and got rapturous applause at the end of it. The clergyman then also recited Psalm 23 and there was not a dry eye in the house. At the end the actor stood up and said, do you know the difference between my version of the 23rd Psalm? and the vicar's version of the 23rd Psalm. He said, I know the 23rd Psalm, but this man knows the shepherd. And as you listen to these reflections, testimonies, prayers, may you too be drawn into a deeper relationship with the shepherd who already knows everything about you. He sees you and loves you still. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. It is a wonderful assurance for me today to read those words again. It speaks of protection, the presence of the shepherd, 
a disposition at least I have food in my life and today I lack nothing I praise God because Jesus says himself I am the good shepherd and so I know that even if we have not everything we want we have sufficient for every day and this I have proved through my life in time of sickness and in times of grief I had nothing really missing the Lord has always provided and so we can pray together Father thank you for being my shepherd the one who clearly leads my life stand on the hillsides where I can clearly see you don't let me miss you as a sheep I will look to you listen for your voice your leading me I trust you to be the good shepherd the wise shepherd the loving shepherd and the strong shepherd in my life you are my shepherd thank you Lord that I have everything I need right now thank you for providing me with many blessings in my life I'm grateful for your goodness mercy love kindness for leading me in my life because of you I have nothing when I intended to look for more desire more and strive for more remind me that you have given me all that I need for today I trust you Amen He makes me lie down in green pastures. It's not very difficult for us in this country to uh, have that picture in our minds. We've got miles and miles of open green fields where sheep graze and uh, we very easily can see what the, sh the psalmist is saying. But of course in Israel where the psalm was written, um, it's a very dry arid area. Um, so there aren't green fields so why would the psalmist put this in to say that he makes me lie down in green pastures I can only surmise that uh, it's because for a shepherd to create that kind of environment for his sheep he's got to work really hard um, and because he's working very hard and giving his sheep the best place to graze uh, it's a sign of his care as the shepherd and so for us we can think of ourselves as a sheep uh, Jesus a good shepherd um, and we can say thank you to God because he wants us to lie down he wants to make us lie down in a place that is rich with food that is a place of ease sheep only rest lie down when they're at ease they have no fears uh, they're well fed and um, they know that the shepherd is around to look after them and so for us we can be like those sheep God providing us with fabulous rich food God releasing us from fear and God being there always as our protector and as our guide so let's share a prayer Lord I don't always want to listen to where you are leading me and I ask that you would give me grace to trust you more when you lead me to rest would you grant me the patience to do so when you lead me to come away and be still would you enable me to leave the noise of the world behind as you make me to lie down I will surrender and obey I will trust you thank you father for only choosing the best pastures for me to lie in help me to follow you to those places lead me help me to feast fill me again nourish my inner being with your goodness I need you amen He leads me beside still waters. 
he refreshes my soul. This verse from Psalm 23 has led my thoughts in the following way. Many of our lives are now very different to how they were back at the start of 2020. At the turn of the year, many of us had little time for being properly still and reflecting on, on what God might be trying to say to us, but now find that we have an enforced kind of stillness and perhaps have the opportunity to let God into our lives to a much greater degree. I am trying to work out ways that I can carve out more time in the future for stillness and quiet when life one day returns to normal. Initially, at the beginning of lockdown, work was very busy for me, but it's starting to become calmer and more manageable, famous last words. I'm able to work from home at the kitchen table a few days a week instead of being in the office every day. I take my coffee breaks in the garden and have more time to be still and to be quiet. And in turn, I find that my spirit is feeling refreshed and nourished. I'm beginning to feel more like me. Something that has helped me over the past few months is the beauty I have seen in the physical world around me. Because of having more time, I'm enjoying working in our garden much more this year with relative degrees of success. This seems to be a common theme with people I've spoken to, the renewal of the love of nature in our own space or on walks. Surely this is akin to being beside still waters when we can be quiet and calm and receive. Life experience is cumulative Things happen to us and we absorb more and more of what is on offer. Collecting things on the way like so much emotional and physical clutter in our lives. I think this can sometimes bury who we are or who we want to be. We can and do plan. In my life there have been periods of waiting and periods of not knowing what is going to happen next. And I have wanted direction and someone to take control. But through it all, as I look back, I can see that God led me when the time was right, that his timing, not mine, is perfect and divine. I feel at the moment this is such a time and that I need to be aware of what God has in store for me. To rest a while and feel ourselves being filled with God's peace and love enables us to be aware that he is in control of our destinies if we let him. We know that his timing for when we should rest and let ourselves be refreshed and then be led on to something new is always right. And now a prayer that I've been asked to read. Thank you for taking me beside still waters to be refreshed, renewed and restored. Be still, you tell me. I will trust you for those times when you know I need to rest and be renewed. I will rest with you. Thank you for always being there and knowing what is coming next in my life. You know when I need to rest and when I need to get up and move. I will trust you for perfect timing in my life. Would you be the one who gives me peace to stay beside the quiet waters until you tell me to stand up and lead me forward again? As I am resting, would you deeply restore my soul and reignite my passion for life for my family, for ministry, and for following you wholeheartedly. I will receive from you. Amen. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. This section of Psalm 23 reminds me that God is beside me, in front of me, behind me, and all around me. He is guiding, leading, and willing me to go down the right paths. God wants good things for us and he wants to use us to help to build his kingdom. When reflecting on this verse, I keep coming back to the events of the past few days. The murder of George Floyd has shone a light on racism, firstly in the USA and then all across the world. I'm sure like many of you, aspects of what we've seen recently have been very troubling to me. But alongside that, I have found it encouraging to see so many people being stirred up to seek out justice not only for George Floyd, but for all of those who have been subjected to racism. It's so easy to consider ourselves blameless, but as a community, as a society, 
we need to consider how systematic racism might be inbuilt into our culture. We need to seek out the best path that we can, the right path. This isn't always going to be easy, convenient or even comfortable, but it is a path that means our lives in every aspect, in our thought, our word and our deed can be honouring to God's name. In Micah 6, we are encouraged to act justly, to love mercy and to walk humbly with God. This is a pretty tough ask, but Psalm 23 reminds us that we have God guiding us and right now I'm so thankful that we know that we aren't alone. Let's pray. I want to follow down the paths you lead. Show me the way I should go. Counsel me with your eye on me. Lead me so clearly. Father, I want to go in the right direction and in the way that honours you most. As I take turns in life, would you speak to me, telling me where to go? I will follow you. I want my life to be a blessing to you. I want to honour you and make choices in my life that are for you. I want to walk in a manner worthy of my calling and serve you. Give me the courage, the strength and the fortitude to follow you closely and without hesitation. I will live for you. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. Compared to the rest of Psalm 23, I feel like this verse feels heavy, but also very real. It's a reminder that evil does exist and isn't something any of us can avoid. We all have troubles and go through periods of feeling like we're in a valley, feeling hedged in and surrounded by our problems. But the idea of walking through the valley to me suggests that that isn't our destination or dwelling place, and that gives us hope. The verse then goes on to say, I will fear no evil, which I feel like is a bold and difficult statement to make, for me at least. But for all the power that evil has, it shouldn't have the power to make us afraid. In the valleys of life you are my peace. Give me a calm heart in the middle of the craziness. Let your nearness be my good. Help me to always find joy in your presence, even in the valleys. I will find peace. Father, would you free me from the fear of evil? You give me incredible victory as I trust you. Flood my heart with your courage. I will be courageous. Psalm 23, this is the last line of verse four. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. My immediate thought, being a fisherman, related to a fishing rod and a wading staff. I use a staff to explore the bottom of a river, feeling for rocks that might trip me and for secure ground to step on. Also, I might use it as a third leg to help to support me. And the wading staff helps to keep me safe. Thinking about the shepherd, and at the time of the psalmist, the shepherd would have stayed out in the fields and pastures with his flock. Now there is some debate about whether the rod and the staff were two different things, or whether they're the same thing and used in different ways. So a shepherd, could use the staff as a walking stick and it would help him to follow and keep up with his flock so he's always close by. The staff might have a crooked end like a hook and if a sheep were to get stuck in a ditch he could use the crook to pull the sheep up. He might even use it like a rope hooking it on something fixed and then lowering himself down a cliff to help to reach a sheep that had fallen. Now if you've ever seen a sheepdog trial or even one man and his dog on the TV, you might have seen a shepherd use a staff and he might beat the ground or extend it at arm's length and make himself appear wider. And this encourages the sheep to go where he wants them to go. Certainly when penning the sheep or putting them through a gate. And living out in the wild, there's always a risk from wild animals. So he could use a staff or the rod as a weapon to fend off attacks from the wild animals or even from thieves. The shepherd always protects his sheep. A short prayer. You are always with me. You never leave me nor forsake me. I praise you that there is no place I can go where I will not be in your presence. You are with me by day and by night, in light and in darkness. I will be grateful. I am safe because you are with me. Your rod 
and staff protect and comfort me. You fend off dangers that don't need to reach me. I can rest securely because I know I can rest in your care. You hem me in behind and before. I know I am protected. Amen. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Preparing a table is for me an act of joy, care, love and expectations, even maybe excitement, thinking of the people that will come to visit. So I trust when God prepares a table for me, he is filled with joy and love. He is not trying to show off in front of my enemies, making them envy me or, or being jealous. I don't think it is about them. For God, I believe this moment of preparing a table is all about me. God's moment of protecting love. Solely about me. When he steps in between them and me, shielding me with his attentive, safeguarding love. Most of you would be familiar with the expression smörgåsbord. And maybe you also know it is the Swedish word for buffet. Translated word by word, smörgås is an open sandwich and bord is a table. It actually means a table with a lot of dishes for you to put together your sandwich. And I very much believe when God prepare a table, it is a kind of smorgasbord for me to find all the different dishes of encouragement, hope, strength, patience, wisdom, joy, peace, and all the blessings that I need to stand tall in the midst of challenging situations. Facing my enemies, whatever, whoever, they might be. God has already prepared me a table. Let's pray together. You prepare a picnic in my crazy world. I love that I could spend time with you, even while surrounded by enemies and perceived enemies. I lift up to you those difficult people in my life. Would you bring healing and peace into their lives? Bless those who have hurt me. I want to spend time with you. Amen. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. My initial thoughts around this line were about calling and provision. To me, Anointing speaks about being chosen for a purpose. There are days at the moment when I feel lacking in purpose. I'm still working, but a lack of formal structure means that I can find myself twiddling my thumbs or staring blankly at a screen. This psalm tells me that I am anointed for a purpose and that all I have to do is follow my shepherd to discover what that purpose is. Still thinking about anointing, I had a look online to see if I could find anything to add to my thoughts, and I found this. Sheep can get their head caught in briars and die trying to get untangled. There are horrid little flies that like to torment sheep by laying eggs in their nostrils which turn into worms and drive the sheep to beat their head against a rock. Their eyes and ears are also susceptible to tormenting insects. So the shepherd anoints their whole head with oil. Then there is peace. That oil forms a barrier of protection against the evil that tries to destroy the sheep. So in those times when we feel tormented, with worrisome thoughts or temptation invading our minds, or when it feels like we're banging our heads against a brick wall, we can ask for God's anointing. His endless supply of oil protects us and makes it possible to fix our hearts, minds and eyes on him and to see our cups overflowing with limitless blessings. Now a prayer. 
Revive me. In those times of drought and the weary places, I need your refreshment and healing. Thank you for knowing when I need a kind word, a kind gesture, a phone call and encouragement. Thank you for pouring out hope over my life at just the perfect time. You are the Good Shepherd. You are good to me. You fill me to overflowing so that I may spill goodness out onto others. Give me more than I can hold. Use me, Lord, to encourage, inspire and uplift others. Give me courage to share your goodness to those around me. I will be yours. Amen. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. Over the last two and a half months, life in our house has been very different. Working from home, homeschooling, has meant that we are spending more time together. This also means that as a family and separately, we have been on an emotional roller coaster and very unsure of what the future will look like for us and for everyone. But believing in God's goodness and unending love, he will be with us and with me always. I praise you for your goodness and mercy. Where would I be without your love, forgiveness and grace? Thank you that your mercy and goodness chase after me and follow after me all the days of my life. You pursue me, stay close to me and seek to lead me every day. I am blessed by you and your relentless love for me. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I imagine that David was facing great suffering when he wrote this psalm. He truly felt as though he was walking through the valley of the shadow of death, as he was pursued by his enemies who were trying to kill him. But I also imagine that he took great comfort in this. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Regardless of his earthly circumstances, he would dwell in the house of the Lord for all eternity. Nothing could steal his salvation, not even death. Regardless of what we face on earth, our salvation is secure. Bought by the sacrifice of Jesus. And because he rose again and conquered death, our inheritance is also with Christ. It's a reminder that our life on earth is only the beginning and that God is working to restore us and all of his creation so that we may enjoy life with him forever the way that he originally intended when he created it. Let us pray. Living God, in the unpredictability of this life, Teach us to trust completely in the sure and certain hope you have given us in Christ. Amen. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me laugh. In pastures green, he leads me by the still, still waters. His goodness restores my soul, and I will trust in you. And I will trust. Oh uh -huh.
of mine prescribing like a doctor would prescribe medicine prescribing the 23rd psalm to a lady who was had just found out that she had a terminal illness and was very worried about the future I asked her to take it or read it if you like twice a day to fill her mind with it to let it do a deep work within her soul because in this psalm we find comfort to ease our pain. We are reminded of the care and provision that we receive but quite often forget about. We find rest for our weary and worrying soul. We find guidance when we don't know which way to go, which decisions to make. We find hope to spur us on to better days. And so if you're struggling with worry about the future or health or even if you're not struggling um, it's good to keep our body healthy, isn't it? So also it's good to keep our soul healthy. I'd like to suggest that you read this psalm regularly and let it do its work deep within you. And if you need someone to talk to in these days, perhaps you're searching for God during these days, perhaps you are a Christian already and you just want somebody to pray with and perhaps you're wanting to deepen your faith and you could chat it through with someone. And if you're watching this on Facebook, you can private message us. Or if you're watching it on the website or on YouTube, you can email us on bromley.temple at salvationarmy.org.uk. Before I share a prayer, here's a psalm read to us simply, without music, without clever effects, uh, but from the heart of a follower of Jesus. You may want to close your eyes and let it do it let it do its work deep within you and let it sink in and then there'll be some music to remind you that we're in his hands we may not be able to see the future but like the sheep that follow and trust their shepherd we too can trust the one who sees us and loves us this lovely psalm psalm 23 so very familiar to you you might like to close your eyes and listen as I share it. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his namesake. 
Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. share a prayer with you as we end today's reflection. Lord, we are your people. Fill us with your grace. Guide us with your truth and send us by your spirit. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. You are my sheep. I know you by name and I will be with you forever and you with me. He says to you, I see you. Namaste. God bless you.